All right, good morning, everybody. Stepping away from decimals and fractions and percents, moving away back towards geometry a bit. Welcome to area part one. So this is kind of ties into what Lois does for a living, that she sells a lot of flooring. And tile on a floor can illustrate area. If you take a look at this rectangle we have here, and anytime you're going to fill this area with either new carpet or new tile or some sort of new flooring, you got to go and figure out the area of it. And the formula for finding the area of a rectangle is A equals L times W, which means the area equals the length times the width. So if you wanted to know what the area of this rectangle would be, it would be 15. You would have 15 little squares here if you cut it all apart, right? Because area is not a measure of length. It's the measure of how much surface there is. How many little squares fit on it. So the other thing we want to talk about is when you are talking about area, you always label the area as square units. You can't just say feet or inches or centimeters. It would have to be square inches. You could abbreviate square or you can just put the little two in the corner. That little two stands for square. Or if you were measuring in centimeters, this would be 15 square centimeters. Or you could write centimeters and put a little two in the corner. Or if you were measuring this in feet, you couldn't just write feet. It would have to be 15 square feet. Or write feet and put the little two in the corner. You always have to label it as square units. Okay, so let's dive right into it, starting off pretty easy right now. Find the area of each. If I had this rectangle that was 6 feet by 4 feet, well, length times width, what is 4 times 6? That would be 24, right? 24 square feet. So I'm just going to write down my feet, and I'll put the little two in the corner, 24 square feet. How about this one? I only have one side. Well, only one side because it's a square, right? So if that side is nine meters, this side is nine meters. So nine times nine, that's obviously got to be 81. So then I'm going to label it meters, which I can get away with just an M and put a 2 in the corner, 81 square meters. How about this one? The rectangle is half as wide as it is long. Well, how long is it right now? According to this, it's 6 centimeters long. So if it's 6 centimeters long and it's half as wide, that would mean that it would be three centimeters, right? But what is the area of the rectangle in millimeters to start off with? Do you remember if it's six centimeters, this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, it would be 60 millimeters. So half of 60 millimeters would be 30 millimeters. So what would be 30 times 60? Well, what's 3 times 6? Would be 18, right? How many zeros do you have in that problem? I got two zeros in the problem, so I better put two zeros in my answer. 1,000. 800. I'm going to go and label it millimeters and make sure it's square millimeters. 1,800 square millimeters. 
So let's go ahead and try it again now. What's the area of the rectangle in just plain centimeters? In plain old centimeters, I'd take that 6, and I would take that 3. 3 times 6 is just plain old 18. Label it, though, not just 18 centimeters, 18 square centimeters, right? Because this is an area problem. Take a look here. How much paper would be needed to line the bottom of a box with these dimensions? I just want to go ahead and put some paper just on the bottom of the box, right along in here. I'm not worried about anything else other than putting a sheet of paper along the bottom of the box. That sounds like an area problem to me, right? So figure out along the bottom of the box here. Looks to me like this line would be 15 because this line up here is 15. And it looks like this line would be 6 because this line up here is 6, right? So 15 times 6, can we do that in our head? We're probably going to need a little scratch piece of paper just to keep it safe, right? 15 times 6, 6 times 5 is 30. I'm going to write down my 0. I'm going to carry my 3. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 3 more. Hey, that is 90. Is that going to be my final answer? 90, it's an area problem. I would need 90 square inches of paper just to go on the bottom of the box. Let's take a look at the next part of the problem, though, if we dare. It says, how much ribbon would be needed to go around the box lengthwise? Around the box lengthwise. This would be I'm going to tie a ribbon here. And then I'm going to go along here. And then I'm going to go along here with the ribbon. And then I'm going to go back here. Is that an area problem? No, it is not. That is a plain old perimeter problem. Hopefully you caught that. The other part where I'm trying to trip you up, what are your numbers for this perimeter? 15 plus 6 plus another 15. And as you come along here, plus another Six. You never really do touch that seven for the height, do you? So 15 plus 15 is 30. Six plus six is 12. 30 plus 12 is 42. Now, since this is just a straight piece of ribbon, is it 42 square inches? No, it is a length. Just 42 inches you would be needing. Take a look at this guy because you are going to see it in the lesson today. It doesn't really tie into the skill lesson, but we haven't seen one like this before. It says, draw a spinner, so draw a circle, with four sectors labeled A, B, C, and D. Take a look here. It says, the spinner should show the probability of outcome A as a half. So basically that is telling you that half of the spinner should be devoted to A. That's not too tough so far. Take a look here, and I changed it a little bit from what's going to be in your book. Here it says the probability of outcome D should be a fourth. So let's just go and make one fourth of this be D. And now it's saying that the outcomes of B and C should be equally likely. So this is what I have left. So if they want it to be 
equal, and I got to get B and C in here, wouldn't I just basically split this guy in half? That would be outcome B, and that would be outcome C. They wanted A to be a half, D to be a fourth, and B and C to be equal, right? That looks like it fits the bill. All right, that is the end. Go slow, go careful, don't be afraid of scratch paper, and...